Hello everyone! Probably looking, feeling, sounding a little rough today. Got a cold. Definitely cold is fully underway in this video. Um, and there's not really a lot I can do about it as far as being pregnant and not being able to treat it with a lot of things. So it's kind of unfair, but it happens. So thank you for joining me for this video. It's going to be just kind of casual. I wanted to do kind of like, it's get ready with me, but to me it's like makeup playtime. You know, I'm trying out a lot of newish things and it's just kind of casual, let's see where this goes type of makeup. So if you're joining me with a cup of coffee today. Cheers! I've used this a couple times already. It's the IT Cosmetics new Bye Bye Pores Primer. It says oil-free poreless skin perfecting serum primer. And the first time I used it, it took forever to get that like pump working, but now it's pumping out just fine. It's kind of like the style of the CC creams, and it has a super, super soft feel. Like, it just feels really soft immediately on contact with the skin. Almost feels a little bit like Smashbox photo finish, but creamier. Next product I wanted to use that I have had on in various videos, but I have not shown an application yet, and it's that Hourglass Vanish foundation stick. It's this triangular shaped stick and it looks like, check it out, I haven't used it more than, I don't know, half a dozen times maybe and I feel like it, a lot of product kind of wears down off the stick and it's a little yellowy and a little bit dark on me right now but I'm going to work with it. Um, I'm still kind of just trying to get a feel for this texture and what's happening here. It's really smooth and just kind of like velvety, and the coverage is really good. I'm using just a classic beauty blender to blend this in now. I was hesitant on whether or not to even use this because I knew, you know, my skin has even lightened up a little bit since I first got this product and now it's kind of like, uh, it's a little dark. By the time we do some brightening and stuff on the under eye area, I think this will all work itself out. To those of y'all who are panicking. Clearly, I don't have the energy to panic right now. <laughs> Some of my favorite foundation sticks on the market are the e.l.f. Moisturizing Foundation Sticks. No joke, those are like some of the best products e.l.f. has created. Um, the This stick, it seems more velvety, it seems a little bit more toward like mattifying, and it's definitely buildable. And what do I mean when I say velvety? I guess I mean like once I've got it blended out, I always feel like there's kind of a softness to the skin. It mattifies, but it doesn't look too heavy, and it is somewhat buildable. I noticed a little more redness around my nose, so I'm going to just add a little product there. That redness really peeks through easily when you got a cold and you're rubbing your nose all day. Next new thing is this IT Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye Illumination in medium. So um, Bye Bye Under Eye is a very well-known squeezy tube concealer that IT Cosmetics has. And so now they've got this illumination version. I am very, very like, you know judgy on any kind of concealer that claims to be illuminating because I don't, you know, I just want coverage. Just cover it up. I'll illuminate it with something else, you know, in, in the places where I want to illuminate. But this is really interesting because it does seem to be a little bit extra brightening, like for a medium shade. It seems even lighter than I would have expected, but it's got a lot of coverage and I don't feel like it gets really shimmery. I guess don't get too scared by it is what I'm saying, but I'm also not convinced that it's that much like more special than the regular Bye Bye Under Eye because it feels a lot the same. And as you can see, because this is so much lighter than the foundation, I'm just kind of dabbing this anywhere where I might want to brighten. And this is my Swispers sponge. Let me show you. A lot of you guys uh, clued me into these, that they're being sold at Walmart. They're sold like near the Q-tips or um, cotton rounds and stuff like that. Swispers mini sponges. So yeah, I've been using this one on and off. And it works well. It's a very soft sponge. I mean, it's, it's incredibly soft. Garbage man's here. Thank you, garbage man. So I was not feeling well really most of yesterday too and I around dinner time nothing really sounded good it's like the combination of being sick and being pregnant it's like a double whammy of being a picky eater 
<laughs> and the one thing that sounded kind of good, and it might be like that chicken soup mentality, but um, that chicken ramen in the cup, the cup of noodles, you know what I'm talking about? Um, the chicken flavor, something about that. Like I ate it and I thought, I don't feel the least bit bad about this. This actually tastes like exactly what I wanted. It was warm, it was noodly, and that seemed to do it for me. So this concealer, even once blended in, it has a kind of dewy to the touch type of feel, very much like the original Bye Bye Under Eye. Um, and I think I'm going to see if I can build this up a little more because when I look head on, you know, you might think, well, yeah, it kind of covered all right. And then I turn and yeah, there's that circle area coming through. So I would like to see if I can more effectively get that area right here. The thing about my face and products, you know, you might see me on a given day in a video and think, oh, that whatever she's wearing doesn't look totally perfect. Well, odds are I'm testing like four or five new things on my face on any given day and not everything's going to do exactly what I want it to do. As long as you're always learning something or picking up some new information, you know, I don't feel like there's any harm in that. Okay, so building up a little bit, yeah, I think it may have helped the coverage somewhat. Um, but the glowiness factor, it's interesting because I feel like it's what's making it glowy is the fact that it is lighter than you would expect for a medium labeled concealer and it's just got a lot of moisture in it anyway so I feel like where it's catching the light yeah that actually does feel tacky if it looks like it might feel tacky it yes it does but there's not actual shimmer in the product or anything it seems to be similar coverage to bye bye under eye um, maybe a little bit lighter just for the fact that you're going to end up getting shades that you think correspond with your skin but they turn out to be lighter on your skin did that make any sense? I need another sip of coffee. I'm feeling like I really, really want to bake this. I'm going to use a little bit of my air spun powder here. Just because that works really well in circumstances where I'm baking and I think it's something I want to add coverage to. I just have this one wet. It'll cover a little more surface area than that mini. I'll just dab this on. Powder everywhere. FYI, this cold started with Belle. <laughs> And she seemed like so down and out for a couple days and then, I mean, it worked its way out of her system quickly. I'm hoping it does the same for me because we're traveling to a wedding this weekend and I would rather not feel like I do now. Now this is normally where I pause on the face stuff and I do some brow and I'm going to use this Makeup Forever Pro Sculpting Brow. I have really liked this. I have it in the shade 40 and it's like a really cool sort of taupey brown and instead of being one of those super fine tipped applicators or sticks it's a little bit you see how it's formed it's almost like triangle shaped like a very skinny triangle and so I just go on and fill in if you're a bushy brow girl like me do you ever feel like you sleep on your brows funny <laughs> and then it's like one morning you wake up and they're going everywhere and then if you twist this, there's a little, like, spring-loaded powder thing here if you wanted to highlight. Now I'm just going to sweep away any excess from that little baking situation there. I'm going to do a light bit of my Too Faced Primed and Poreless powder, just kind of on the T-zone. And this is my City Color Contour Effects 2 palette. And you get three really big shades. I'm going to go into this deepest shade with my Sigma Small Contour Brush. First time using this product, actually. And I'm going to build up very little by little because I know how pigmented City Colors blushes can be. <laughs> so I don't want to, like, drown myself in contour here. Really nice tone on that contour powder, though, and pretty easily blendable, too. I really want to mix in like these kinds of videos where you're seeing more applications um, because especially this time of year for me I feel like my channel becomes very review heavy with all the palettes and gift sets and stuff and I know you guys are interested in that um, but I don't want to lose sight of like 
random new products, showing the application, even, you know, showing the application with some of those sets and palettes so you can get a little more feel for them. You know what I'm saying? Now, I'm honestly not sure how new these blushes are. They were recently sent to me, some full-size Tarte Amazonian clay blushes. All the ones I was sent were very, like, neutrally kind of easy colors, but this shade called Risqué, I think might be my favorite. Like, it's the perfect neutral matte kind of dusty rose color. So I'm gonna put this on for you. Mmm, loving, loving life. Did my face need some blush on it today or what? I mean, come on now. Okay, good stuff that I'm gonna return to my City Color palette and they've got what looks to be a shimmery, glowy, yeah, it looks like it could be very glowy on this highlight. I like to take it down right over the apple of the cheek so when I'm head on, you're still seeing glow, not just when I turn. Setting mist. I'm going to run out of this soon, actually. My Hard Candy Sheer Envy Hydrating Primer Mist. This feels good. Feels cooling. I needed that. Now the one thing I did know, like I did have a little mental direction on going into this video, was that I wanted a dramatic fall eye. And I am going to bust out one of my Juvia's Place palettes in this video so we can see this in action. And this is the Nubian 2. So they've got, I think it's called the Masquerade is the big biggie. And then they've got a smaller one that's all neutral. And this is that middle one that I think has some beautiful jewel tones and neutrals just mixed together. It's like the kinds of colors that this time of year I would be very compelled to wear. So I think this is, this might be my favorite of all the palettes. I'm going to kick it off as always with a little eyeshadow primer. First shade I want to use in my crease is Madagascar, perfect uh, medium brown. And this brand was basically designed to be something that would contain products that really do show up and come through on people with deep, rich, tan, really deep skin tones. In an interview I was reading, um, that's what they said, and then they commented that you know, if it if it can show up and be true to color on those skin tones, then it should be great for everyone else as well. And I think that's kind of a good mindset for brands to have when it comes to their shadow palettes and the pigmentation. And these are just incredibly pigmented. And the pans, as you probably noticed, are super large. So still working with Madagascar, just kind of bouncing back and forth, trying to even this out. Go ahead and blend over that edge with a bare brush. What do we have for a highlight here? We don't really have a matte highlight, but we do have this. I'm going to use Nairobi down here. Really like yellowy gold. I'm going to take that on the inner part here. And you accidentally go into the plum. Little highlight like around the inner corner here. And I think I had some dark remnants still on my brush there, so I'm going to have to correct that. Really hate layering more concealer on that area, but has to be done. Then I kind of want to transition away from the gold with this coppery color up here. And I was going to continue with olive green, but I just don't really see myself liking that too much. So I think I'm going to go with this berry color here, this matte berry called Jezebel. Hat that on the outer corner, how about? Super gorgeous alongside that gold and copper. Wow. I'm just patting that on with a slightly larger flat brush. This color is like the heart of fall leaves changing, don't you think? Like when you see really bright yellows and reds and burgundies. Then I just want to brighten my gold a little bit more. And I think I'll work in a little more of this brown, just kind of on my borders here. This is my Sigma E36 brush, by the way. And then for liner, I'm going to use this Tardis. It's a double-ended liquid and pencil liner, and it has a really nice, um, very dark black liquid here. Do a little um, Rimmel Scandalizing Nude, lower inner rim. That area needs all the brightening it can get today. Now I want Kenya, this nice dark brown, 
coming right under my wing. And then I think I want to go for some green. I'm going to use this Egypt shade down here. I'm using it kind of softly. I'm not going to show as a big bright pop of green. It's not because it's not pigmented. It's just a very small surface area where I'm applying it. Adjusting just a little bit. Once I get my wing out there, then I can really see exactly where I want to take my eyeshadow out to. I'm just going to curl my lashes and I'm applying this voluminous feline on each eye. It's been an okay mascara for me, you know, not amazing, but a situation where I know I'm putting lashes on top, so I just need a little bit of a base coat on my super straight lashes to get them falling in line with the falsies. I would really encourage anybody though, like if you have any time, um, you know, spare time even at the end of a day to um, just ab absolutely play with your makeup, not feel like, oh, my look has to turn out this certain way, or I'm really concerned about, you know, making it be appropriate for this, this, and this. Just playing with your makeup, like wiping off what was on there from the day, starting fresh, doing whatever the heck you want, or maybe it's the start of the day thing, like what I'm doing right now. Like, just give yourself a little bit of freedom just to have fun with it. That's how I have discovered so many times, like, oh, I like using this product like this, or these two together, or, you know, you just run into more little finds when you're just in a relaxed, just makeup using mode, you know? And then Clump Crusher Water Resistant Lower Lashes. And then I'm gonna put some lashes on and join you for lips. Got the lashes on and I had kind of a time with these. They are the Ardell Double Ups, um, the 202s, so really thick lashes. And I had trouble like getting this side to like bend in and really curve to the shape of my eye. That's what happens when you use a fresh pair of lashes that hasn't been on your eyes before because it kind of like needs a little time to mold almost. And my eyes really go, you know, have a roundness to them, I notice when I apply these lashes, so you got to watch out for that. New little holiday thing that I was super excited about, snatched it up just as soon as I saw it on Sephora's site, um, Bite. <laughs> Bite has a little four pack here. It's a set of their Amuse Bouche lipsticks. You've got four shades, Fig, Pepper, Honeycomb, and Nori. And this is actually my first time using this new formula that they've put out because, you know, they discontinued Luminous Cream, which I'll admit I was bitter about that for a little while. Love that lipstick formula. So I've got a couple of these that I think I'm going to work into my lip look today. I'm going to use Honeycomb, which is the most nude. And yeah, these are mini lipsticks here. And I was trying them on the other night and I thought, wow, you know, they still do feel really great on the lips. You know, I don't have any complaints. And then I kind of want to work in a little bit of Nori, which is this really dark shade. I might work in a lot of it. I wasn't sure, you know, exactly how much layering I wanted to do. There are no rules during makeup playtime. These really are exceptionally creamy. I wonder if they feel like there's even a little more, like, moisture or a little more wetness in the formula. Than before. So yeah, Nori kind of took over, but I like it that way. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little fall themed makeup playtime session. Um, sorry I wasn't feeling better or I didn't sound better. You know, I know I'm a little congested today, but this is really what I would have done anyway today was just kind of gotten out my newer products and played with them and experimented a little bit. So I figure let's just turn the camera on. If we had sort of a high and low from this look, I think the low might have been, I was a little disappointed with the Bye Bye Under Eye Illumination just because, I don't know, I, I'm still looking at my under eye area thinking if I would have corrected that or used, you know, like a peachy corrector or my tart shape tape or something different, I could have totally eliminated my under eye circle there, but I just didn't feel like this was capable of doing quite enough, even though I did layer it on twice. High point for me, definitely um, my Nubian 2 palette. I really love the shades in there. I think that's such a great fall, like, pop of fall type of palette. And I must admit this Bite formula does feel fantastic on my lips and I absolutely 
absolutely adore this color that I've come out with, which is maybe just a little lighter considering I layered Nori over Honeycomb. It's probably a little lighter than Nori would be on its own, but I really think that's working with the berry accents on the eyes. So thank you again, guys, for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.